today we're starting off a new Venus series with Venus in Aries. Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Nina. I am a Western tropical astrologer who's been studying astrology since 2014 and reading professionally since 2017. To book a reading with me, you can go to ninabastrology.com or click right here. So this is the beginning of a new series. A little while ago, I asked on my Instagram out of a couple of options, what new placement series you guys would like to see? And by a small fraction, but still so, the Venus series one. Now just a little reminder that this is a general placement video. You are not defined by what I say here because there are so many different ways that Venus can be interacting with your chart. And to help facilitate the understanding of your individual Venus a little more, you can check out my Aspects to Venus video. Let me know as well if you would like to see a video of Venus through the houses to see how that might inform your Venus interpretation a little differently. And of course, if you want the most personalized interpretation of your Venus possible, you can book a reading with me at ninabastrology.com. Getting in really quick into what Venus represents. Venus is what we love and how we love. What we love in terms of what we value, what we value in a partner, what qualities we most love about ourselves, even resources and skill sets that you might have depending on your Venus placement. And it's also how we love, how we express to others, hey, I value you. Hey, I would like you to become a resource in my life for lack of a more romantic phrase. So as you can tell, Venus obviously has to do with romantic partnerships, but it can also influence how you might value friendships, how you might value certain resources, and what skills you might have to cultivate value in your life. Interestingly, starting out with Venus and Aries, it's worth noting that Venus in Aries is in its detriment. And if you don't know what that is, in astrology, with every planet, node, celestial body of any kind that we read in a birth chart, there is an agreed upon most opportune placement, most counterintuitive placement, and then the most intuitive placement and the most unintuitive placement. I know it can be a little confusing. I said one was counterintuitive and one was unintuitive. Basically with something that's in its fall, it is in the opposite position of whatever is in its exaltation, which is the best, most opportune placement for a planet. And whatever is in its detriment is the opposite of the domicile, which is the most intuitive placement. And the difference between the domicile, which is the most intuitive, and exalted, which is the most opportune, is that the domicile is always just that planet in a sign that it rules. Whereas the exalted placement, the most opportune, sometimes is also in a sign that that planet rules, but sometimes is just something complementary to it. Because sometimes the domicile planet is too intuitive. There's not a lot of room for expanding upon that energy and not falling into the pitfalls of something being so intuitive. So hopefully that cleared a couple of things up for anyone unfamiliar with that terminology, but Venus in Aries is in its detriment. And because Venus rules two signs, Libra and Taurus, there are two Venus placements that are considered to be in their detriment, Scorpio and Aries. And so I'm gonna hop right into what exactly makes Venus and Aries a little unintuitive, but I will also, fear not, I will also get into the strengths and opportunities with this placement. Because Venus is a rather social planet, Venus has to do with how we express love and how we invite partnerships into our life to make our lives more valuable. Aries is an unintuitive placement because Aries is primarily focused on survival, is primarily focused on getting 
through life and maintaining a sense of individuality that is not interrupted. So that's not a diss on Aries by any means. It is an energy that is very important in other areas of our lives where we can stand strong in our individuality and where we can have the motivation to get through life, to get things accomplished and to make our lives work for us. It's a very empowering sign in that way. But when it comes to a planet that has so much to do with connection, you can see where that doesn't necessarily align with the sign of Aries. So the pitfalls that you might have with Venus in Aries is being a little stubborn and inflexible with letting go of your sense of individuality or personal interest in order to cultivate a mutual relationship. A strength though, is that it gives you a great sense of self-worth, you know? Venus is what you value. And with Venus and Aries, you value your individuality. At the same time, on the low end of energy of Venus and Aries, instead of feeling very empowered and autonomous and pleased with your individuality and headstrongness, this hesitancy to incorporate other people into your life, open yourself up to other people's values, open yourself up to valuing someone else more or at least equally to yourself may come from a sense of self-preservation, that monkey brain of survival that Aries oftentimes has a lot to do with feeling that any small step into connecting with someone else could potentially threaten your individuality. Or especially if your Aries Venus is poorly aspected or intercepted, it can be a self-protection mechanism, a feeling of you won't be understood or this relationship is just going to hurt you or be taken away from you. And your Aries Venus might act out of survival and self-preservation. Another way that a Venus and Aries might get in the way of harmonious relationships is that kind of naive self-interest. Maybe it's not coming necessarily from a place of hurt, but rather from a me first attitude. There can be a hesitancy to let other people into your life because you simply do not have the value of compromising or looking for win-wins. You might value your individuality and autonomy so much that you look at everything as a win-lose situation rather than a win-win situation and you feel a little combative and unwilling to be open to other people's needs and values because again you have that self-preservation of putting yourself in the win position rather than the lose position instead of being open to the possibility of coming up with a win-win situation so if you resonate with that it might be worth exploring why that mindset might be prevalent in you that mindset of there are only win-lose situations and I need to make sure that I'm on the win side and if I win, it means someone else has to lose. It might make you feel a little uncomfortable or vulnerable to ever let someone else win because the thought then is that you will inherently lose and you might strong arm your desires over someone else's rather than being open to exploring how the two of you can come together. This makes a Venus and Aries sometimes a little hard to get. I mean, Aries is that warrior, that fighter, that hunter, if you will. And sometimes Venus and Aries sees love as a sort of game in which they want to win and in which they want to stuck and hunt, I don't mean stuck literally. I'm not saying because you're a Venus and Aries, you're outside hiding in a bush with some binoculars <laughs> looking into someone's window. But you know what I mean? It might be a bit more of a sport, the dating game. And again, you might have that 
win attitude that I need to win someone over and maybe that makes it so that you prefer more challenging love interests and almost stubbornly reject people who are willing to meet you 50 50 because you don't get that sport like challenge of winning someone over maybe the fact of you courting in that way first and foremost leads to the foundation of a relationship that makes it difficult to see eye to eye get on the same page and have open honest solution oriented conversations with your partner the idea of stability can be intimidating because aries enjoys excitement and enjoys forward motion so again that might be why an aries venus may be a big flirt because they like that forward motion of winning someone over but as soon as it sort of plateaus in any way where someone might see that plateau as desirable stability an opportunity for a more deep and intimate connection the aries venus might get a little restless put into perspective that aries squares cancer cancer is all about that vulnerability and intimacy so those qualities might make an aries venus a bit more uncomfortable in a relationship it also squares capricorn which is all about future oriented solution based thinking commitment that's also a little counterintuitive to what the aries venus wants obviously it's opposite libra libra is all about win-win aries is much more about win-lose making sure that aries is on the win side and i don't say any of this with judgment or shaming you for having this placement again this is a general interpretation and if things are resonating for you i encourage you to wonder why it is beyond just the fact that <laughs> venus was in aries when you were born but why is it that you resonate with this win-lose mindset in relationships as much as astrology may seem to be about nature over nurture in my practice i found that astrology has as much to do with nurture as it does with inherent nature maybe you grew up seeing a combative win-lose dynamic in the relationship between your parents or other family members or on tv even maybe you experienced in your relationships characters who made it seem impossible to find a win-win situation and so you developed this strategy of self-preservation in relationships so that you don't open up and become vulnerable you don't commit or think solution oriented long term you look out for yourself and make sure that you're not losing your individuality when you are attracted or talking to or dating a person now even though this can be a difficult placement because it is in its detriment let's point out some fun and empowering things that the venus and aries can represent it may just be that despite how much hollywood the movies and society in general makes love and relationships and marriage such a primary focus for everyone as a venus and aries you might be above that messaging and might just be confidently happy with loving yourself and following your bliss i think that a fantastic manifestation of venus and aries is being able to follow that bliss and find a lot of fun and enjoyment with the way that you express your values or maybe your values simply are fun and enjoyment and doing things to stimulate you doing things to make you excited motivated and all of these great things that aries represents and if it is a big value of yours to connect to others be in a relationship all of that classic venus stuff the venus and aries can 
always make sure that you maintain your individuality, that you maintain a sense of personal interest. And that is something that a lot of relationship oriented people struggle with and can lose sight of when getting into relationships. Also with Venus and Aries, Flirting is fun. Flirting is so fun as a Venus in Aries with a Venus in Aries. I just encourage you if you are a Venus in Aries to just check in with whomever you may be courting or flirting with and make your values expressly known because sometimes Venus and Aries might have a tendency to lead people on if they are not ready for a committed relationship, but so ready to win people over with their charisma and charm. Venus and Aries also tend to be quite direct. You know, that's an Aries way of expressing itself. It can be disarming to some, disarming to most probably, someone being so direct, so blunt, so honest, and in that be very attractive. But the messaging can get a little confusing when Venus in Aries is so blunt, so straightforward, and usually just so very complimentary and flirty and all of those things. And it doesn't always translate to wanting an exclusive relationship, wanting a relationship at all, wanting to continue even the conversation beyond one night. So it can be frustrating when you feel like you're having a good time, you're doing you, and people love you and then hate you because they feel like you led them on. Because at the end of the day, you might not consider that other people have different values or even consider that maybe it would be a natural thing to cater to someone else's values. So that's just something to keep in mind if you resonate with that aspect of the Venus and Aries. So to review, Aries Venus are confident, fun, flirty, they can keep their autonomy in a relationship. They can maintain their self-interest. But sometimes the Venus in Aries might act too much out of self-preservation, might have the outlook that relationships are a win-lose situation rather than a win-win, might feel the need to overly assert their values and their needs over someone else for fear that they won't get their needs met, or they'll be hurt or betrayed or whatnot. But at the end of the day, again, this is a general interpretation. There is so much more, not just to your Venus, but to your whole chart. But I hope that this video gave you some insight into yourself or someone else or into astrology in general. Again, for more clarity and insight on yourself as a whole person rather than a placement, you can book a reading with me at ninabastrology.com. You can also check out some of my merch if you feel so inclined at ninabastrology.com slash shop. But that's all from me for today. I hope that you have a great rest of your day or night and thank you for watching. Bye.